Loaded show today as the Golden State Warriors got a double dose of great news as Andrew Wiggins returned to the lineup and showed promise heading into the regular season and Moses Moody on the back end today's show we'll talk about him and how he continues to earn the respect of this Warriors coaching staff hopefully cementing himself as a key rotation piece for Golden State this season before we get into all of that though guys special little announcement here I made a Twitter to get a little bit more Warriors coverage out there be able to talk to you guys a little bit more one on one so why don't you give me a follow here it's Smitty at CS, S-M-I-T-T-Y-A-T-C-S on Twitter for even more Golden State Warriors coverage. If there's going to be an injury, if there's going to be a piece of breaking news, this will be the first place that you hear about it on my Twitter. So give me a follow and we'll get started with today's show. What's going on, Dub Nation? You're watching Warriors Today by Chat Sports. I am your host, Tyler Smith, and the Warriors got a double dose of great news. And starting off with Andrew Wiggins and the fact that he is back in this Golden State Warriors lineup after missing all of the preseason, basically all of training camp with an illness who what we know now to be bronchitis uh, related symptoms. But hey, regardless, all that's over now. Wiggins is back in the lineup and, you know, the Warriors actually have a new starting five uh, combination that Steve Kerr tried because Wiggins was inserted back into the rotation. But man, Wiggins, he was pretty. He was, he was okay last night. Not great from the field. Three for nine, 0 for three on all three of his three point attempts. But hey, put up 11 points. He's five for five from the line. So it was nice to see Wiggins being aggressive in that regard. Got a steal and was very active on the defensive end. That's what I was really seeing. Wiggins shine more of uh, on the uh, on the defensive end because that's something that you don't really lose over time. Yeah, he hasn't been the, in in the best uh, conditioning shape so far this uh, this autumn, but you know heading into this season. We're going to need Andrew Wiggins to be one of the best on-ball defenders on the Golden State Warriors. Jonathan Kamenga has not shown that he can be an elite wing defender just yet. Hopefully there's time to improve in that regard. But Andrew Wiggins is going to be that guy who's going to be D'ing up the best wing on opposing teams. And it's great to see Wiggins being aggressive. I talked about that 5 for 5 getting to the line. This is something that you know the Warriors really lack on the wing as far as... Aside from Jonathan Kaminga, they don't really have many downhill scorers, guys who can put the ball on the deck and get to the rack. And Andrew Wiggins is one of those guys. Now, he is closer to 30 now. Is he the same athlete that he was you know, early on in his career when he was on the Minnesota Timberwolves? Probably not, but he still has that ability to get downhill. And as far as what he's going to do on the offensive end of the floor, yeah, he wasn't the best scoring the basketball yesterday, but he did get some easy looks at the rim. Shooting the basketball, though, that's just going to come with time as Andrew Wiggins gets back into real basketball shape and continues just to get more shots up. He's going to make more shots. He missed three of his attempts yesterday, but I'm not too worried. Steve Kerr is probably not too worried either. He is confident that Andrew Wiggins can take over that second scoring mantle this season and shoot six plus threes per game. That's what Steve Kerr has told Andrew Wiggins he wants from him. So, He's going to be shooting a lot of threes this year. Don't take this performance with a take this performance, excuse me, with a grain of salt as he did go over 3. And the good part is about Riggins' performance is he looked more comfortable as the game went on, you know, just getting his legs underneath him, running up and down the floor, getting up and down. That's, you know, something that we were concerned about with Andrew Wiggins heading into this game. You know, we hadn't seen him basically for the entire fall so far since this Warriors team has gotten together and started playing ball together. Andrew Wiggins really hasn't been a part of it. So it was nice to see that he Got more comfortable as the game went on and was able to, you know, you just be more aggressive. You know, have that just dog mentality on defense, being more comfortable on offense, running the floor, being ready to catch the ball in his hands and put the ball in the cup. I was happy to see that from Andrew Wiggins. And another thing that we saw that we haven't really seen so far from Wiggs is he started, but it wasn't in his normal position. For the first time since being a Minnesota Timberwolf, Andrew Wiggins started at the shooting guard spot. Now, we're going to talk about that lineup that Golden State put out there in just a moment, but Andrew Wiggins at the two spot could be interesting that, I don't know, maybe we'll see him more at that spot this season than we have ever before as the Warriors have a ton of wing and guard depth. But as far as the lineup that Golden State did go out there with, shout out Anthony Slater, always keeping us in the loop. Give him a follow on Twitter as well. Steph Curry, Andrew Wiggins, Jonathan Kaminga, Draymond Green, Trace Jackson Davis. Man. We have never seen this lineup before. These five have never shared the floor together, but they did do 11 minutes last night. They were a minus one, but I want to see more of this lineup. I think this lineup gives you a ton of size and versatility. Think about the lineups that we've seen for Golden State so far. you got Steph Curry and Brandon Pajemski in the backcourt. you got Steph Curry and D'Anthony Melton in the backcourt. And sometimes they've even had Moses Moody in there as well. And you kind of find yourself putting out a really small lineup a lot of the times, and especially when Draymond Green's going to be playing the center spot, that's an even smaller lineup. So this is like 
probably the biggest five that you could put out there for Golden State. When you think about Curry, who you have to have out there in the starting lineup. But then, you know, two switchable wings in Wiggins and Kaminga there at the two and the three. And then you got guys like Trey Jackson Davis and Jonathan Kaminga, or Trey Jackson Davis and Draymond Green with the ability to switch there down in the front court. Now, what Steve Kerr's, you know, idea of this lineup is and how Jonathan Kaminga and Andrew Wiggins kind of play off of each other in this scenario. He said the key for this lineup is J.K. and Wiggs running the floor. It puts a lot of pressure on teams. And they set a good, uh, a good tone tonight. The way they, did, they just got downhill. With or without the ball, they were gone. I, li- I really like the way both of those guys played and the impact that they can make with their athleticism and force. So not necessarily with them ne- getting, you know, getting the ball in their hands all the time, but just getting down the floor, making the defense run and work and kind of having them on their toes where, you know, a guy like Steph Curry can go up there and just see a little bit of space, pull up 30 foot or bang. And man, this might be Golden State's most balanced lineup. Like I said, with the ability for them to switch and with the ability for them to kind of get offense in different kinds of ways with two downhill scorers in Kaminga and Andrew Wiggins, but also Andrew Wiggins being that three-point threat. We've seen Kaminga be a better three-point shooter so far in the preseason. And then Draymond Green and Trace Jackson Davis are your, probably your two best front court defenders all in all on this roster. So with that being said, I want to hear from you guys on what you thought of the Golden State Warriors starting lineup that they implored against the Lakers last night. Let me know down in the comments if you guys like it or not. Type Y for yes, type N for no. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. So YouTube might throw you a little ad break. Go down below, answer our com- our question, and we'll get on with the rest of today's show. My whole thoughts on this starting lineup that Steve Kerr threw out there for Golden State last night. I want to see more of it. I think that with teams in the Western Conference, they are big, they are long, they are lengthy. And there aren't a ton of Golden State Warriors lineups out there that have those you know, intangible qualities. that you, the Stuff you can't teach. Size. So, honestly, I'm looking for this, this lineup to be used even more. But it's not going to be easy for the coaching staff to put this lineup out there uh, when Jonathan Kaminga, Draymond Green, and Andrew Wiggins combine 0 for 8 from deep. That's not going to help their case as far as getting on the floor together at all. The Warriors coaching staff already has concerns about Jonathan Kaminga playing the small forward position without a shooting big in the lineup. And with Trey Jackson Davis in the fold there, it doesn't help when Draymond Green isn't spacing the floor either, and neither is Andrew Wiggins. But... It's all preseason at the end of the day. Take it all with a grain of salt. Don't put too much stock into basically anything that you're seeing this postseason, except for what we're going to talk about on the back half of today's show. Because we got another piece of great news as one of these Warriors, man. He just, he's basically leaving no stone unturned. He is putting himself on the map and cementing himself as a definite piece of this Warriors rotation that's going to make a big impact on winning this season. We'll talk about that in the back half of today's show. But before we do, I got to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 10 million active members. And we got a sick deal for you. If you sign up today and use our code CLNS when you do sign up, you can get $50 instantly when you play $5 entry. Now, what are these entries that you speak of? You just pick two or more player projected stat types and just pick more or less and then you can watch the winnings roll right in so you place an entry of five dollars using our code clns you get fifty dollars for free you think justin jefferson will get more than 83 and a half yards next week christian mccaffrey to run for more than 75 yards when he gets back cook up hot takes with your friends and win real money this football season with you and your crew run your game on prize picks but the basketball season is upon us and they also have a phenomenal deal giving you guys free money Shout out Anthony Edwards getting this deal hooked up on prize picks. More than a half a point in his opener against the Los Angeles Lakers on October 22nd, next Tuesday. That's a free square. Why would you not take it? They're giving you free money. Who doesn't like free money? $50 for free. Free square, Anthony Edwards. How could you not want that? Plus, they have season-long projections for the basketball season as well. Give me Steph Curry more than 26.5 points per game. And Luka Doncic. I saw this one. I was like, man. He's definitely getting 250 balls up this year. Give me more than one and a half 50 point games for Luka Doncic. You can tail my picks. You can fade my picks. Just make sure you go and do it at Prize Picks. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5 entry using our code CLNS, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks, run your game. Keep shredding him, Moses Moody. He is making a case to honestly be one of the most important players on this Golden State Warriors roster so far this preseason. I know I just said literally two minutes ago that you can't put too much stock into the preseason, but Moses Moody is basically challenging that narrative and saying, you better put some stock into me 
heading into this regular season because, man, he has been lights out as far as the production, and not only the volume and, and the numbers, but the efficiency efficiency of Moses Moody. He is one of the only Golden State Warriors who's putting up stat lines like this on a consistent basis this preseason. In only 19 minutes last night, he put up 21 points, grabbed five boards. Never, you know, never going to be Moses Moody's calling card, but love when he gets possessions for Golden State. 7 of 14 from the field, guy shooting 50%, even over 50% from three-point range. Five for eight, and he was a second leading plus 17 on the team in 19 minutes. That kind of impact is not made very often. That kind of impact is made by a guy who is hungry, who is trying, who is clawing his way into the Golden State Warriors rotation. He is leaving no stone unturned, and he is basically making it an impossible decision to leave him out of this Warriors rotation heading into this year. Steve Kerr had this to say about Moses Moody. He said he's going to play a big role for us, but so are a lot of other guys. We're sitting in the coach's room every day saying, how are we going to play all these guys? Because they all deserve to play. I've asked all of them to play their hardest, make it difficult for us. Hey, Steve, newsflash, he is making it difficult for you. He's actually making it impossible to leave him out of the rotation. How can you leave the leading scorer of the preseason out of the Warriors rotation? I know, you know, you're not playing your starters, extended minutes in the preseason, but a lot of these Warriors are getting 18 to 20 minutes in these games, and Moses Moody is clearly outplaying the rest of the field. Steve Kerr did kind of... Give a better quote, in my opinion, on Moses Moody here is what, what he had to say here. There's a reason we drafted him. Size, strength, and ability to shoot the ball. I think he's grown into his body. He looks stronger to me. When he's putting the ball on the floor, people are bouncing off of him. He's shooting much better off of pin downs on the move. He's put all the work in, and he's earned this. Listen, talk is cheap, Steve Kerr. I'll believe it when I see it. And I won't believe it when I see it for the first couple of games of the season. I need to see it consistently, months over end, that Moses Moody is seeing 20-plus minutes per game because the guy deserves it. I think he's one of the most promising young 3 and D wings in the league. He is a little bit undersized, maybe more of a shooting guard than a traditional 3 at 6'5". But at the end of the day, I think with the Warriors' versatility and the you know options that they have, I think Moses Moody can play a lot of minutes at the 3 this year. 20 minutes per game, it's not going to be easy to come by with all the depth that Golden State has, but that's what I'm looking for from Moses Moody this year. What about you guys? What do you guys think? How many minutes per game should Moses Moody see for the Golden State Warriors this, this season? Let me know down in the comment section. Is it 20? Is it 25? Do you think he should be a starter? Do you think he should be the number two option? Let me know down in the comment section. It's not just me. It's not just Steve Kerr noticing that Moses Moody is making a massive impact and deserves to be in this Warriors rotation. It's Golden State's most important figure, Stephen Curry. He thinks that Moses Moody has gotten a lot better. Here's what he, Stephen Curry had to say. He said he's gotten better. I think he's been a lot more aggressive looking to score, looking to play make. He's a pest on defense when he's in the right spots. That might have been a backhanded compliment. Seeing the game, connecting the game, you could tell there's a difference. We have a lot of options. He's gotten the short end of the stick a lot, but hopefully the patience and perseverance will pay off. Listen. He spoke. 30 spoke. You listen. If Steph says you can play, then play the man. I mean, as far as – I know Steph's not the GM. I know Steph's not the owner. But he is the most important voice in that Warriors front office, in that Warriors locker room. I know he's not a member of the front office. But Stephen Curry, what he says should go, in my opinion. And with Moses Moody's performances in the preseason so far, how could you not play this man? As far as what he's done for Golden State in the preseason, where he ranks on the Warriors roster, he's been fifth in – Fifth in minutes, so he's not like he's playing a ton. He's playing, you know, some of the most, but he's getting getting consistent first half minutes and getting consistent second half minutes, and he's making the most of all of them. 15.8 points per game in 20 minutes. That ranks first on Golden State this preseason. Six three-pointers attempted this game. Only Stephen Curry and Buddy Heald have more attempts from three. He's third, and guess what? He has got I, this little asterisk right here. He's fourth on the team in three-point percentage in the preseason, but... That's for players who are shooting two or more threes per game. There's a couple guys like Kyle Anderson at the top, Blake Henson, who have all shot like one, less than two threes per game in the preseason, who are shooting a little bit better percentages. But for like Buddy Heald, Steph Curry, um, and D'Anthony Melton and Moses Moody's standpoint, he is fourth among actual three-point volume takers on this Golden State team. And... I mean, free throw percentage doesn't mean too much, but hey, he's making the most of all of his opportunities. Like I said, he's leaving no stone left unturned, maybe aside from that one missed free throw, but he's second on the team in anyone who's taken more than one free throw a game. He is just, he's making it too hard for Golden State not to play him. And he's also got a contract in the future that he's rightfully deserves. According to Anthony Slater, Golden State and Moody 
have talked about a potential ex uh, extension, which there is a deadline. We know the deadline is October 21st, the day before the start of the 24-25 season. Is a deal going to get done before then? Moses Moody is definitely making a case for that to be the uh, to, for that to happen with his preseason performances so far. Now, the Slater also mentioned that there is a framework of a deal in place that would look like a mid-level exception. Uh, money-wise over multiple seasons. Now, what is the mid-level exception? It's about $12.8, $12.9 million. That's what, that's what DeAnthony Melton is getting on his one-year deal from Golden State this year. And what have I been saying all along? That's what Moses Moody likely deserves, about $12 to $13 million a year for what he can hopefully become and what he's been so far. I think Moses Moody is a valuable player of this team. Hopefully, Steve Kerr thinks the same as the season goes on. But that'll do it for today's edition of Warriors Today by Chat Sports. Make sure you guys give me that follow on Twitter. I'm trying to get like 20, 25 new followers today. That would be awesome if you guys could hit me up over on Twitter. Let's talk about the dubs. If you didn't agree with anything I said today, shoot me a DM. Let me know what you guys think about what I had to say about the dubs. And as always, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel, youtube.com slash Warriors TV. We're covering your dubs like nobody else on YouTube this season. We'll see you in the next one. Let's go dubs.